Hi guys, welcome to the webinar, Helping Your Child with Autism Thrive. My name is Tina Avila, I'm a licensed therapist and a board certified behavior analyst. I'm also a parent coach, so I do a lot of parent training and consulting with um, parents who have kids on the spectrum or kids with challenging behaviors. So who am I? I'm also a mom and a wife. I have a two year old um, and he is such a handful. As a disclaimer, I am not a medical doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I cannot give you advice on your child's treatment. The webinar is for educational purposes only and cannot be used to treat any medical condition or to cure autism or related disorder. What are we going to learn today? So today we're going to be talking about what autism is. We also will be talking about what is ABA therapy play-based approach, naturalistic teaching, and there'll be Q&A at the end. I really like this poster right here. Um, always unique, totally intelligent, sometimes mysterious. It's so true. So what is autism? Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. It affects different areas of child development. Um, it is based on the DSM-5 criteria which includes delay in speech or there's no language development at all, at all, restricted and repetitive patterns of interest. So you might see a child might be just really obsessed with certain topic or certain toy and unable to um, enjoy doing other things. Um, a child might be lighting up cars or lighting up shampoo bottles and just be really fixated on certain things. Symptoms must be present in the early developmental period, and as you can see, symptoms as young as 18 months. A lot of time, um, your child might not diagnose till they turn three or about two and a half, um, but you can definitely see some characteristics of autism as young as 18 months. So your child might not make eye contact or might not be aware that you're there or delay in speech by the time they're about 18 months. Um, other symptoms can cause clinically significant impairment in social and occupational and other important areas of current functioning, such as um, social skills and some self-help skills. Um, there may be some behavior um, that accompany ASD. Um, I think that it's definitely due to lack of effective communication. There are three levels, one, two, and three, my moderate and severe. So what is ABA? ABA is a scientific approach to understand behavior, how behavior is affected by the environment, and how learning takes place. It is the most effective intervention. It has 50 years of research that's found to um, increase skills and decrease behavior with kids who has ASD. Dr. Lovez's research, which is his famous research under the Young Children Project in UCLA, um, he uses ABA strategy um, and he um, came up with the term called DTT, stands for Discrete Trial Training, which utilized the ABA approach. So this teaching style DTT has found to really greatly increase some of the deficits and help teach new skills and also help reduce a lot of the behaviors. Um, the program can be customized and developed by a BCBA. What's great about ABA is that it can be individualized. So it's not one size fit all. Um, we found that collaborative approach with parents and caregivers has shown the best outcome. So it's always good for you to collaborate with your providers to see what they're working on and some of the strategies that they're using with your child. So you can use that at home as well. Um, it's definitely... Um, Traditional DTT is table task work. Um, so this is what DTT session looks like. Um, you can see we have a structure area where the student will be learning and the teacher has a data sheet and has flashcards and um, items to teach the student. Um, you definitely can do this at home. You don't have to rely on your therapist. You can have a child sit at the table and you can present different um, different flashcards, the different items that you want your child to learn. What DTT is um, focusing on is breaking down the task into smaller tasks. So for example, instead of teaching the whole alphabet A to Z, 
you might be just focusing on three letters, A, B, C, or random letter, it doesn't have to be in order. And then you will just work on one letter at a time in a field of three cards, right? Um, because if you do 26 letters at the same time, it's going to be overwhelming. So d discreetly, you're going to be um, breaking down the task in smaller steps, and you're going to be reinforcing the correct behavior. So what's great about DTT is that the student can learn really quickly um, with a um, short amount of time. The next one is that how can we use ABA to teach communication? So first off, we kind of have to assess and know where your child is at. What's the skill set? Can they, can they communicate? Can they say words? Can they um, sign? Can they speak in sentences? You know, so um, the first thing we teach if your child has limited language or no language at all is to teach requesting program. Um, requesting meaning that your child is going to learn to request for what he wants because that's going to help eliminate some of the behavior and your child will get his needs met. So let's say he wants cookie and he is grabbing and pulling you and maybe flop to the floor or having tantrum because he wants a cookie and he can't tell you that he wants a cookie. So you definitely want to teach the requesting program first and then you can move away from that and teach um, identification of things around the house because it's great to know where things are right you know go to the restroom just toilet go to the kitchen come to the bedroom um, be able to identify items in the environment would be like the next step and then you would move up to the next level which is verbal exchanges or conversation and before you can actually work on conversation you have to make sure that your child basically can um, uh, can have pretty good amount of vocabularies before you can start um, and can actually attend to what you're saying. Um, so you could do nursery ram, um, singing and dancing can kind of get your child um, out of that um, student mode and, and into having fun with you. So with um, little ones, we do a lot of like nursery songs like twinkle twinkle little star. So you might stop at the word star and hoping that your child will um, say the word star at the end of the song. So you want to make it fun and engaging and eventually you can work on increasing um, conversation like asking question, like WH question, who, what, where, when, why. So these are more higher um, a level of teaching, but I would start with teaching requesting program first. And you want to identify the reinforcer and the motivator, right? If the child likes snack, you know, you want to have few snacks for the child to request. So how do you teach communication? You uh, want to pick one to three targets um, and you want to pick a location for communication. Where do you want your child to request? Is it in the kitchen? Um, you can do that during like playtime. If he has a favorite ball, you want him to request for a ball. Then you want to apply the three term contingency approach, which is the ABC which stands for antecedent behavior and consequence. The A is um, antecedent, basically your instruction and your question. Behavior is what are you targeting? Are you targeting your child to say cookie? You want him to say, to sign cookie or to say the first sound, like sound. And the consequence would be um, him receiving the cookie right away. You want to reinforce immediately without any delay because what you're doing after the behavior will affect the behavior. It's either going to increase or decrease the behavior. So if he's asking for a cookie and he says cookie, you want to give him cookie right away. That's if that's the reinforcer you're using. So some other uh, communications that we can talk about is using picture exchange system. Um, so this it's called pets and signs. So these are something that you can actually look up. Um, you can print them out and I would suggest uh, buying a laminating machine. I feel like it's like 20 bucks at Amazon um, and you can laminate these for child who are nonverbal. It's great to show them that these um, pictures um, communicates words and action um, like all done, uh, please, thank you, more is a good one. Um, you can also print out pictures of items if the child cannot speak at the moment. Items such as like 
prefer things like cookie, ball, so then they can actually hand you the picture of what it is they want and they receive the immediate reinforcement. Um, again, you know, you want to do something fun, like she's playing on a drum with um, her son, so it looks like they're having a good time, so she could actually um, work on requesting more, requesting uh, drum, the word drum. Um, she can also teach him the word, you know, tapping, hitting the drum, uh, colors, counting, how many times they're hitting. Um, so there's a variety of way of teaching communications using preferred activities. And then so she's also working with um, her son, her baby boy, on uh, like stacking. And maybe she's teaching colors. Words to focus on. You want to pick and choose few words, so don't pick like 10 or 20 words to work on um, at once because it's way too much. So pick one to two words that um, you feel like it's going to be helpful and, and your child will get that reinforcement right away. Um, so what I usually focus on are some action words and, and some words that will lead to tangible and activities. So like help, more, open, close, all done, me and mine, prefers food or snack, prefer activities, Mama, Dada, drink, eat, up and down. You can also use ABA to teach social skills. Um, and you want to pick one to two targets, like um, teaching um, how to greet, say hi or bye, turn taking, waiting, or attending to tasks. You also want to have reinforcer that um, you're going to be using to increase that social skills behavior. So social um, reinforcement could be a high five, you know, uh, lots of praises and smile and lots of positive engagement. Tangible could be your child's getting the thing that he's um, t uh, waiting for or getting the thing that he is turn uh, doing turn taking with. So if you're doing a uh, turn taking with a preferred item um, and your child could only do three seconds before he has a meltdown, you definitely just want to work on three seconds. And you can say, it's my turn. So you would take whatever it is that he likes and you would count one, two, three, and now it's your turn. So he would get the item back and, um, and you're also teaching him to wait. So you want to use three term contingency. What's great about that is that the ABC model will teach the behavior, any uh, pro-social behavior you want to see um, your child working on, you want to have a consequences after that behavior. So if your child is saying bye to his friend or saying hi to his teacher and the teacher says hi back, that's the consequence, right? That's a positive consequence um, that he's getting um, that social reinforcement um, with or without peers. So you can actually work on social skills by yourself, you and your child, or you can work on it with siblings or older kids. I would recommend uh, working on it with someone who uh, is a little bit above him and who can able to set up these opportunities. You want to make it fun and rewarding um, since you know you want to uh, create positive environment, uh, a social environment, so you, you kind of want to make it fun, right? If it's boring and not engaging, they're not going to want to stay around that social environment. Um, start from the child's baseline. So it's important for you to know your child's baseline. If they cannot even wave hi or say hi, we're not going to expect them to say hi right away. We can work on physical prompting, holding his hand and just wave his hand and then pair it with the word hi. And then eventually um, you can do a partial prompting, which is you're not holding his whole hand. You might be um, holding his elbow and lifting his hand up. Um, you want to shape the behavior slowly and gradually, and you want to celebrate small success, right? Um, think back about two months ago, three months ago, when your child, when you started to do therapy with your child or he started getting services, what was his behavior like? What was um, his communication like? And now, you know, maybe he can say a few words or he can pick up a few signs. So I suggest do celebrate those small success and don't forget that um, these skills are very difficult for them and we want to continue to praise and um, reinforce attempts. 
some social skill training idea. So um, you can use nursery rhyme. It's just so much fun when you do like song and music that your child enjoy. Um, I know baby shark is actually a big thing right now. So all the kids know the baby shark song. Um, and so there's different ways you can do preferred activity. You can sit on the floor and play with them. You can dance. Bubble is a good one to try as well. Balloon bubbles, going outside and play. So the next one we're going to be talking about changing behavior. How do you change um, problem behaviors? There are four functions of behavior and you need to understand why it's happening, right? So the four functions of why the behavior could be happening, um, the acronym is SEAT, S-E-A-T. It could be because of the sensory needs, escape or avoidance, attention seeking, or access to tangible preferred things. You want to identify one target, which is one behavior that you're trying to change. And you want to work on collecting ABC data collection. And what that means, you're going to be collecting data on what happens before the behavior, the behavior, and the consequence. And then you want to identify the function of behavior based on the ABC data. So this little guy is crying right here, so he's not feeling well, and we don't know why. And this little guy is like running away, escaping from something, or he's having fun running. We really don't know until we examine the behavior. So this is what the ABC data looks like. This is more like a formal data collection. You definitely do not need to use this kind of form. You can do like ABC on the top, and then you can just take notes on what happened before and behavior and consequence. You also want to include the time of day. If it happens more in the morning or evening, you, kinda, you can kind of see the pattern. You also want to put in who is around the child. Is it you? Is it dad? Is it grandparents? Is it sibling? And where are they at when behavior happens? Is it at the library? Is it at school? Is it at the park? We want to know all that. And then you want to write the script, descriptive descri uh, description of the behavior and the consequence that happened after. The comment could be the possible hypothesis of the function. So you will see a pattern once you have done um, the ABC data collection for a few, uh, few days. You also can test out your hypothesis. Let's say you think, oh, she's tantruming for attention. There's really nothing else um, that could be causing this. So what you can do is when your child is tantruming, you give her attention, you console her, and then she stopped. So then you can verify that it's attention maintained behavior. Then how do you change these behaviors, right? Since we know the function, what do you do with it? So you definitely want to um, base your interventions on the function of the behavior because if you are um, reinforcing like attention seeking behavior by providing attention so the behavior will increase so we want to make sure we match the function with the correct intervention so first one is like we said sensory right s-e-a-t Sensories, um, basically, you may see your child spinning in circle, flapping his hand, putting things in his mouth, like different some sensory input um, behavior that you see. You want to use replacement activities to meet your child's sensory needs. So what that means is that you want to find replacement uh, activities, um, like if your child is spinning in circle, maybe jumping on the trampoline can help reduce spinning. You want to avoid allowing the child to engage in inappropriate sensory behavior by blocking or removing the item. Let's say your child is stimming on the iPad screen constantly, nonstop, because it's whatever it is, like the lights or the sounds or the video, it's just overstimulating your child. So you want to make sure you're not allowing him to do that for hours and hours on end because negative behaviors can come out of that. So you want to find ways to help your child get his sensory needs meet, uh, get his sensory needs met without actually um, doing something that can lead to problem behaviors. Um, and we can talk more about strategies after this. 
Escape and avoidance. So if your child is running away or escaping from non-preferred activity, it's going to be really hard to teach. So you want to teach replacement behavior. Rather than running away, you can have a break card on the table and they can use a break card to request for a break. Or you can teach the word break or help. Um, or teach other words that will help get their needs met at that moment so they do not have to run away or engage in escape behavior such as maybe hitting, maybe going under the table, maybe ignoring your instruction, right? You want to avoid letting your child escape from whatever demand it is you're asking him to do. So if you say, you know, put on your shoes and he runs away and then you just say, okay, oh well, you know, so what happens next time is that when you say put on your shoes or brush your teeth, he's, he knows that you're not going to follow through with this and he's not going to listen. So definitely if you see that is an escape and avoidance behavior for non-preferred task, you want to follow through and you want to make sure he puts on his shoes. The next one is attention seeking. So a child might engage in tantrum to seek attention from you. Um, so you do want to teach appropriate attention-seeking behavior like calling your name, tapping on your shoulder, try to get your attention some more appropriately. You want to avoid giving attention during the problem behavior. If your child is like tantruming on the floor of your house and there is no, um, and your house is safe, there's nothing around that could she could be injured, then you definitely can't ignore that behavior. I know it's hard as parents, we don't want to ignore the child or make... Um, as may seem cold, but think about the behaviors happening and the behaviors and the consequence that happen after the behavior. If you're there consoling her and she is seeking your attention negatively, it will happen again next time, next time, and next time. It's going to be harder to change. Um, the child might be engaging in behavior to get something, right? Tangible stuff like a video game, cookie. Um, toys, car, train, uh, without asking because they don't know how to ask, right? So you want to teach um, uh, words of the object that they want or signing or you can have visual picture of what it is they're asking for rather than engaging in that behavior. You want to avoid giving the item to the child during the problem behaviors, right? So when the child is having a full blown tantrum, you do not want to give him a piece of candy or chocolate to make him stop because this behavior will happen again next time. Because a lot of time, our kids are very smart. They make the connection between um, what I do and what I, get, what I get after that. So if they get preferred things after tantrum, they're gonna keep, um, continue to have that behavior. So we just wanna be aware of that. So next we're gonna be talking about proactive strategies um, or preventative strategies. This strategy you can use prior to behavior happen, you want to use every day, you want to use them before anything happens, right? Because you want to eliminate and prevent behavior from happening. First, um, you can use priming strategy. It's like front loading if you work at the school. Um, priming, basically you're letting your child know what to expect ahead of time. And I mean like ahead of time, like in the morning. Okay, after school, you're going to be going to Target with mom and then we will be picking up your brother and then we can go home, right? So, and then when you pick up your child, you will remind him again, remember after school, we're gonna be doing this, this, and this. Especially when there's changes in the schedule, you wanna let them know way ahead of time. Um, visual schedule is great. It's a picture schedule that you can create. Um, you can also purchase a schedule board as well. Um, I know Melissa and Doug has like a, a schedule board that she sells um, and it has different activity that you can put on the board. You can also print out a permanent schedule if it's the same thing that you guys do every day like the morning routine and night routine. First and then strategy is great as well. So you're going to tell your child what to do first which is a non-preferred activity. Then they get something preferred after. So it's not like a whole list of schedule. Basically, we're gonna do this first, then you get this. Social Story is another one that's great. It's created by Carol Gray. She um, basically talks about uh, ways to display pro-social behaviors in a kid-friendly way, like a story. Um, it can be you know, one page script, or it can be multiple pages like a book. Well, it depends on um, how long can your child attend to a story. 
So I would include pictures of what it is that you're trying to teach. Um, a lot of time we um, might do social story for events like birthday party, going to a new school, potty training, um, going swimming, going to the beach, like things that are just the child doesn't really do every day. So it's like a new event. Um, so the store can have only picture if you want. This, for example, birthday party, you can have a picture of a birthday cake, kids playing, um, balloons, right? And then you talk about what do you do at the birthday party? This is what you see. And then you kind of just um, narrate the story with the picture. You can also write out a sentence under each picture as well. Um, it just depends on the your child's skill set and can they sit through a story. Choice making. Um, so choice, choice making is great because you're not forcing them to do what they don't want to do, right? And there's no um, power struggle. So choice making basically means that you're going to give your child choices to do non-preferred things. So let's say um, they have to do math, right? There's like math and maybe writing and they hate math and writing and they don't like homework. So you can say, hey, would you like to do math first or writing first? So you have two choices, right? So either way, they're going to have to complete their work, but now they are in control of choosing the activity that they can do first. Um, I do a lot like in terms of like coloring, like do you want to use a crayon or a color pencil? Do you want to paint or do you want to, um, you want to paint with a paintbrush or you want to use your finger, uh, like finger paints, right? So I feel like that kind of give your child more control and they're less likely to engage in behavior. Um, it's best to use it for difficult tasks like homework, mealtime, or self-help skills. Environmental changes is great as well because you want to make sure the environment is best suited for learning and remove any distraction you have that could be a barrier. Um, lastly is non-contention reinforcement. This is an ABA terminology. It basically means you're giving your child what she or he likes without any expectation or any contingency such as if your child seeks attention from you all the time and engage in uh, problem behavior, then we want to overcompensate positive attention and provide that quality time. Um, and you want to do that freely without expecting your child to do anything, right? So let's say you are off on the weekend, so definitely spend 30 minutes playing with your child and just having fun, right? So they're getting your attention without having to work for it. Same thing with games, toys, prefer activities. This will help it decrease problem behavior due to deprivation. If the child is deprived of your attention, they might be acting out a little bit more than if they have your full attention consistently and it's scheduled.